For the next section, we studied lines and linear equations in two variables. First, we will review rectangular coordinates in the xy plane. Now, we have the xy plane, we'll have a distinguished point that we call the origin. Rectangular coordinates give us directions for how to move from the origin to our points of interest. So if I have a point in the plane, we'll assign an ordered pair, so in parentheses I'll have an x comma y. The x value, okay, the first coordinate, is going to tell us how we move left or right relative to the origin. The second coordinate, the y value, tells us how we move up and down relative to the origin. Now, these numbers are real numbers, so they can be positive, negative, or zero. If they're negative, so for instance, if we have okay, x value negative, that says we move to the left. If it's positive, we move to the right. For the y value, that's negative, we move down. If it's positive, we move up. Now, if we have both coordinates equal to zero, what does that mean? Well, it says we're going to move left and right by zero, up and down by zero. So we do nothing. So the origin is going to be the point zero comma zero. For some other examples, okay, if I take one comma two, x equals one, y equals two. So that says go right by one, up by two. And we get to point A. If I take minus one, two, so we have x equals minus one, y equals two. This says go left by one and then up by two. So I get to point B. Finally, if I take one comma minus two, we have x equals one, y equals minus two. So that just says go right by one, down by two to get to point C. Now, we have other interesting objects in the plane besides just points. Okay, so we have the x and y axes. So the x axis, okay, you'll note points here. Well, we're not gonna move up and down relative to the origin. So this will be the set of all points with y equals zero. Likewise, the y-axis will be all points with x equals zero. We also have four quadrants. Okay, so going counterclockwise, we'll have quadrants one, two, three, four. And the way you describe these is on whether x or y is negative or positive. So for instance, for quadrant one, this is where the x value is positive and the y value is positive. Quadrant two, x is negative, y is positive, and so on. Now, that's pretty much everything we can say about points. So, for something a little bit more interesting, we look at lines. Geometrically, we know what lines are. Okay, I could take any two points in the xy plane, we join those points, and then we just extend off into infinity, and then we get a line. Since we're doing mathematics in here, okay, to make lines useful, we need to know how to quantify them, describe the points that live on them. First type of equation for lines that we're interested in, we call the standard form. So these are in the form ax plus by equals c. a, b, and c are numbers. We don't want a and b to both be equal to zero. So at least one of them is non-zero. So for an example, we have x plus 2y equals 3. Now, how do I connect this equation to something in the xy plane? Well, I want to find all solutions to this equation. So I want all x and y such that when we put it into the equation, we get a true statement. So that'll be something that looks like three equals three. Doesn't have a lot of content, but it needs to be true. We collect all of these solutions, so there'll be pairs x comma y, and then I can just plot these x comma y as points in the plane. So what comes out, we're gonna call the graph of the equation. Okay, in the special case, we're expecting the graph to be a line. Now, big question. How do we go about finding solutions to put on the xy plane? Now, I have an equation, so I can just pick points for x and then solve for y, if possible. I could also go in the other direction, pick values for y, and see if we could solve for the x values. So, if I have x plus 2y equal to 3, I could pick x equal to 0. It gives me the equation 2y equals 3, or y equals 3 halves. So we get the solution 0 comma 3 halves. I take x equal to one, okay, we'll get y equal to one, and I get the solution one comma one. If I take x equal to two, 
we solve, I get solution two comma one half. So those are all gonna be points on our line. Okay, we could also go in the other direction. If I pick y equal to zero, I get x equal to three. So we have the solution three comma zero. That gives us one direction, how to find solutions. How about the other way? So suppose somebody gives you something they're claiming to be a solution. How do you check that? Well, you take your point, you just put it into the equation and see that a true statement comes out. So for instance, we have x plus two y equals three. If I'm given the point minus one, two, what I'll do is I'll check. So I see if minus one plus two times two is equal to three. Well, this is equal to three, so I have three equals three, and that's a true statement. So this is a solution. On the other hand, if I try, say, minus one, three, okay, we put that in the equation, is minus one plus two times three equal to three? Here I get a five, so we have that five is not equal to three, so this is a false statement here, okay? Five equals three is false, so this is not a solution. The reason we want this, okay, when we get to graphing, when your graphs come out not looking right, you're gonna to wanna to check in your equation when you do your troubleshooting. Now, how about we take our example, take the points that we found, let's take a look at the graph. So we had zero, three halves, one, one, two, a half, and three, zero. So when I plot each of these, okay, we'll see that they're all gonna fall on a line. So when you're plotting your points, okay, you don't wanna do just two points, you wanna do a third to check your work. Now, on our graph, we have some special points. So I have the x-intercept. That's gonna be where our line crosses the x-axis. Okay, remember, that's gonna be with y equals zero. The y-intercept, it's gonna be where the line hits the y-axis, and there we have x equals zero. For another example, let's consider the line 4x minus 2y equals 8. Problem, we want to find the x and y intercepts, and then we'll get the graph. Once we get that, we want to know, is 1, 1 a point on the graph? For the intercepts, okay, the x-intercept, we set y equals to 0. Okay, we solve, I get x equals 2. So the x-intercept is 2 comma 0. Likewise, for the y-intercept, I set x equal to 0. So I put that in the equation, we solve, I have y equals minus four, and our y-intercept is zero comma minus four. Now, for one comma one as a point on the graph, that's the same as saying is one comma one a solution for our equation. So we'll put one one in there, and see if what comes out is a true statement. Is four minus two equal to eight a true statement? No, that's false, so one one is not a solution to the equation. 1, 1 is not a point on the graph. Now, to get the graph, we have the intercepts. Okay, we have two points. So we'll just plot the points, connect the dots. We have for the x-intercept, 2, 0. So that's that point there on the x-axis. For the y-intercept, we have 0, comma minus 4 down here on the y-axis. We connect the dots. We know 1, comma 1 is over here, not on our line. So it's not a solution, so that checks that. And I should check one other point just to make sure we haven't messed something up. So I take x equal to one, okay, I solve for y, we get y equal to minus two, and I have the point one comma minus two. So if we plot that point, okay, I go over one, down two, I get another point on the line, and that checks my work. Now, we have a few special cases. Okay, so the first one is when c is equal to zero. So if I have ax plus by equal to zero, in this case, there's only gonna be one intercept. Okay, the x and y intercepts are equal. They're both equal to the origin. So if I take, for instance, three x minus y equal to zero, okay, for the x-intercept, I set y equal to zero. Out comes x equals zero, the origin, and likewise for the y-intercept. Now, you have only one point, so how do you get the graph of your line? Well, remember, your line has a lot of points on it. So I can pick any x or y until I get a solution, and that'll give me my second point, assuming it's not the origin. So if I let x be equal to one, okay, what comes out, that's gonna be y equals three, so I have the point one comma three. Okay, I go over one, up three, 
connect the dots, and now I have my line. Now let's look at what happens when one of A or B is exactly zero. For instance, if I take X equals three, how do we work with this? Now first, this is an equation in the form that we're interested in. This is one times X plus zero times Y equal to three. What we can do, we can pick points in the plane, check them in the equation to see if they're solutions or not. So for instance, if I take point three comma one, see if it's a solution, what do we do? We take our X and Y, we put it in the equation, see if a true statement comes out. Now, note here there's no Y, but that's not a problem. That's just not part of the test. So if I put my point in, we get three equals three. Is that a true statement? It is. So that means three comma one is a solution for our equation. Note, as we keep checking numbers, we'll see that the solutions are gonna be any pair where I have a three in the first slot. And then Y can be any real number that we like to get solutions. For the graph, this says, I can go to the right by three, and then any Y that I choose is gonna give us solutions or points in our graph. So we're getting a vertical line here. Note, if I want the X intercept, what do we do? We set Y equal to zero, so we'll get the point three comma zero. If I want the Y intercept, we set X equal to zero. When I put that in the equation, we get zero equal to three. That's a false statement, which means this never happens. Okay, we can never have X equal to zero, so that means there's no Y intercept. Likewise, we can consider equations of the form Y equal to minus one. So using the same logic, all solutions will be in the form X comma minus one. If I wanna plot the line, what do we do? We could use any X that we want, but we're always gonna go down by one. So we go down by one, and then we let X vary going all the way left and right. So this is gonna be a horizontal line. If I want the Y intercept, what do we do? We set X equal to zero. So I have zero comma minus one, and we get this point right here. As before, there's no X intercept, because if I set Y equal to zero, we're just gonna get a false statement to come out. So that means this can never happen. We never have Y equal to zero. We can get one more degree of special. I could let exactly one of A or B be equal to zero, and I can let C be equal to zero. What happens there, we're looking at X equal to zero or Y equal to zero, they just give us the Y and the X axes.